Am fam, what is up? And welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a comparison between the new Hourglass Ambient Edit Palette. I have the Tiger version. I'm sure you all have seen it online. And the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Let's get into it. So the first things first here, if you look at the palettes, you can already see that Charlotte Tilbury only has the blush and highlighters. Hourglass has blush, highlighters, and a bronzer shade, just depending on your skin tone. So for me, this works as a bronzer and also wanted to take note that if you have the Hourglass Ambient Volume 3, the deepest shade that is in here is the same shade that is in the Tiger palette. So since Charlotte Tilbury does not have a bronzer shade, I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Um, my favorite way recently to apply contour powder, bronzer powder, or blush is with a slanted angled brush. This one, this is an old brush. I got it from Sephora a long time ago. Therefore, I will be sure to link some of my favorites down below in the description. So we're just going to go ahead and go into this shade right here and i do have a little bit of cream contour on just wanted to throw that out there but i'm going to use this to just add some warmth to my face and you can see already the warmth that it is going to add if you are my shade or lighter this is definitely going to add some warmth to your face lori it's lori's life if you don't follow her on youtube you need to because she is an absolute gem she uses this shade on her as a blush and i love using Lori as a reference because her skin is beautiful she's one of my really good friends and it's nice to have someone that does have a deep different skin tone especially if you are deeper than me and you need another reference she is a fantastic reference so I'm gonna go ahead and apply more on this side over here and you can see let me pull y'all in a little closer there we go and you can see the warmth that it adds to my skin immediately it looks beautiful and i like it especially for this time of year because i mean i feel like i've said this plenty of times but i am the type of girl that switches up her makeup just due to the seasons and in the fall and winter time i tend to not bronze not tend i don't bronze as heavy as i do in the summertime and of course I'm not in the sun as much, so just naturally your skin tone's not going to be as deep, but we still melanate it no matter what. However, I just don't want to look too, too warm red in the fall and winter months, so I feel that this palette is straight perfection when it comes to the bronzer and the tone of it. All right, so we have added our bronze moment. And then I'm just going to wipe my brush off really closely here. Now, something that I do want to take note oops, with the Charlotte Tilbury blushes, the Charlotte Tilbury blushes, they are not as luminous as the hourglass blushes so with the hourglass blushes if you have used any of hourglasses powders the allure with them is that they give this beautiful glow it's not where it's too intense because y'all know me i'm an oily skin girl all year long acne prone skin texture so therefore i can use this but i just have to be a little bit strategic because unfortunately for me my large pores and and texture tends to be in the area so i put the blush on however these are going to add more of a glow these blushes here so this one here it's going to pull more copper and it's beautiful and this one here is going to pull more orange however with the charlotte tilbury blushes you have this deeper one up here the lighter one they have a little bit of glow but it's way more subtle than the hourglass so we're going to start off first by putting the hourglass on my cheeks and this isn't going to be perfect Perfect, like a perfect complete look just simply because I'm doing this for the purposes of you actually being able to see the shade so first I'm going to go in with the orange tone because I just think it's crazy pigmented like please be careful be warned and that's one thing with me with my blush products I don't like my blushes to be crazy opaque 
and a lot of pigment. I saw quite a few comments where people were saying they were unsure about the Charlotte Tilbury due to the swatches looking sheer. It's blush. So most of the times, your blush isn't going to be as crazy opaque from a swatching standpoint as an eyeshadow. Now, if you really want it to get down to it, technically the formulations of it, could you use some eyeshadows as blushes if you wanted to? Absolutely. But just for me personally, I don't want my blush to be too pigmented right off the gate because I need more wiggle room and I prefer to build up more. But just be warned, these, it doesn't take much. So I definitely tapped off my brush here and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the orange blush just right on the apple of my cheek. So that way y'all can see it and you can see immediately do you see that glow that it has on my cheek that is beautiful so this is the orange this is going to look good if you are my shade or deeper this is going to look bomb on you so now i'm just going to wipe off my brush paper towel always have a paper towel on deck to do and then we are going to take the copper blush and I'm just gonna place it right next to the orange so that y'all can see it beautiful so here we have our copper and here I'm sorry here on the apple of my cheek we have the orange tone and then right beside it and going back you're going to have the copper tone and you can see let me zoom in on it and let me pull my light up just a little bit. Hope I didn't wash myself out. Hold on, I think that's too light. I don't like for my lighting to make my skin tone look lighter than what it is because that is a false representation of what my skin tone actually looks like. So you can see the orange tone here and then you can see the copper tone and it has all of this beautiful reflect in it and it is stunning. So now what we're going to do, I'm going to grab my fan brush. Let me wipe that off as well. And we will just play a little bit with, I mean, this gold here. Y'all know what hourglass highlights look like. I'm just going to put a little bit of that down the center of my nose. I do not subscribe to the highlighted tip of the nose. That's not my jam, but... For the sake of the video just to show y'all so y'all can get an idea of what it looks like all right so then you have these two highlighters and personally i could have done without those um they're not anything that i personally would gravitate towards anyway when it comes to highlight um i'm not really a highlight girl i don't mind for my blush to have a little glow to it but if i am going to reach for a highlight i prefer a cream or well i prefer a liquid highlight i like those better on me just simply because it glides over the texture of my skin better but now we're just going to take this and i'm just going to place that right above because i want y'all to see and it is very pretty so you can see like the burgundy pinkish tone that's in it but then you can also see that light reflect from the highlight and it is very beautiful and again keep in mind i'm only placing it in these areas for the sake of you actually being able to see it on my face just simply because doing a swatch of a face palette it doesn't tell you anything until you get it on your face. So this is what it looks like. So if you are someone who has dry skin and you want that nice glowy look to your face, this will do it. Even with me having oily skin, I don't mind the glow that it adds because it's just giving a more glow from within. That is what Hourglass is really, really good at. All right, so now I'm going to just wipe off my blush here, my blush, my fan brush, and I'm going to dabble into this one. I just need to find a place to put it out on my face. Here, I'm just going to pop it right again. The placement, no, no, I don't want that. Here, I'll put it right here on the temple. So this one I am not really a fan of, and if there's nothing wrong with the formula. It's just the tone of it. That's just not really a tone that I would use. However, something that you could do 
with your face palette you can use your face palettes on your eyes as well so I would use this for the outer corner and to contour my eye and then you could use either of these to pop on the inner tear or on the um, inner part of the lid then you could go in with the orange or the copper on the outer lid you could do that and it would look beautiful so here are our swatches of the hourglass palette so we have our bronzer over here all over my face on the cheeks the apples of my cheeks we have the orange tone we have the copper tone right behind it right here on top we have this beautiful tone and then right here on my temple area we have that and then down the center of my nose I place a little bit of the highlight all right so that is our hourglass palette now let's move on to Charlotte Tilbury. all right so going into the pillow talk this is the medium deep palette first we're going to start off with the lightest shade and we're going to dab into pillow talk now pillow talk well the whole pillow talk palette it is not at all as opaque as the hourglass palette meaning that when you dip in you're not going to pick up a ton of product and i don't mind that because like i said earlier i like to build up and i think that's why people felt like the swatches were sheer just simply because the blush palette isn't crazy opaque but i'm okay with that so same thing i'm just going to start off by putting this on my cheek here right on the apples of my cheeks and I love this blush because this well this whole palette just simply because this is one that is very soft it's romantic it's easy to work with in regards to the color story so no matter what you have on your eyes you can wear these and it's not going to clash any lip combination it's just going to work nicely so I'm going to build it up a little bit so that way y'all can get a good idea of what it looks like on the cheeks. I love it, love it, love it. I have been a huge fan of Charlotte Tilbury blushes for about three years now. I think they are fantastic. So that is the Charlotte Tilbury blush. This gives natural, everyday, soft glam bridal, bridal vibes, okay? Now wiping my brush off, we're gonna go in with the deeper one. And then I'm just going to put this right behind it. And I think this one is beautiful. You could layer any or all of these, whatever you want. I really, really, really like this. So what I would probably do, just depending on how I feel, I would probably lay down this one first and then pop pillow talk on top of it if I wanted to add a little bit more dimension. But it is just a beautiful beautiful blush so on the apples of the cheeks we have this shade here and then right behind it we have our deeper shade and i think it is beautiful 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 all right now these highlighters here so of course a shade like this that is not a shade that i would be checking for so i'm just going to go ahead and dip into that and i'm going to just place it right up here again this is just a preference um me personally a shade like this i would be more prone to putting it on my lid instead of my face because it's just not a tone that i prefer to use and then i'm going to swatch into this pinkier shade and then I'm just going to pop this one right above. And this is beautiful. And again, neither of these are highlight tones that I would gravitate towards. They are more so shades that I would use on my lid. So boom, there you go. Now, let's talk about it because we got some things to talk about. Okay, so I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about either one of these without addressing the elephant in the room. It is no big secret that Hourglass has definitely had an issue in regards to producing shades deep enough for deeper skin tones. It's very frustrating when luxury brands do this just simply because we know they have the capital. If you saw my live where I was doing the Charlotte Tilbury first impression, then hey, you part of the fam. I love you, girl. You already know we talked about it in depth there but it's very frustrating when brands that are luxury brands they have luxury price tags they have a luxury budget and then they don't produce 
the deeper shades. Okay, cool. And I can understand why for quite a few of you, that is an issue. And that's why you don't want to buy from them. And guess what? I respect that because at the end of the day, you have to do what you feel comfortable with because the gag is no matter if a brand is providing shades for all skin tones, no matter if a brand is a black owned business and they're focused on deeper skin tones, we don't need none of this shit. <laughs> and that's just keeping it word up straight like all of this stuff is a luxury you don't need any of it now on the flip side to charlotte tilbury she is one of my favorite brands and i am someone that is always going to gravitate towards a brand when a makeup artist has created it. just simply because as a makeup artist myself i know that the makeup artist truly understands what's missing how to add value color tones and whatnot the frustration with her is while she has an, a bunch of amazing products when you do there there was a time and i feel like she's getting better now that again the same issues like how can you be a makeup artist and you don't provide enough deeper tones or deeper tones that makes zero sense to me because for me and my experience in the beauty industry I've been working in the beauty industry for 10 years I worked in the salon for 10 years predominantly hair colors makeup artists one thing that I noticed while working in the salon especially because of the nature of the demographic and the area that I worked in the salon that I worked in was predominantly white women okay and I understood, okay, I'm a black girl, I'm a young black girl, I'm gonna have to really, really hustle to even try to make half of what the other white stylists are making. How did I do that? I made sure that I know how to do every single person that walks in the door. So whether you white, orange, yellow, blue, green, straight hair, coily hair, wavy hair, whatever the case may be, you walk through the door, I can do your hair and makeup and it doesn't matter. And so as I started realizing that and that became my edge, I got really frustrated because I was looking around and I was kind of like, well, hold on. How come everybody else doesn't know how to do everyone's hair? The other hairstylist that worked there, I love her so so much she has taught me so much she's another african-american woman she's been doing hair longer than i've been alive she's from brooklyn and i love her and her energy same thing every client that walked in the door she knew how to do their hair as well so i found that very interesting and then when you slide over to the makeup artistry aspect of it i said all of that to say how can you call yourself a true makeup artist if you cannot do everyone that sits in your chair rather they be fair medium deep dark you should be able to do their makeup because one isn't harder over the other it's just a matter of do you understand color theory or not so with charlotte tilbury i love her i love her aesthetic i love her brand i love a lot of the products i use a lot of her products on myself and i use a lot of her products on my clients as well but i can't sit here and say that i hadn't noticed that she is just now getting to the point to where she is adding in deeper tones and i know that bothers there's a lot of you so therefore this is a conversation that needed to be had especially when talking about two specific brands that are luxury brands and they have some shit with them okay so now that we got that all out of the way I am someone who at the end of the day yes I understand it's an issue I'm not negating that but it's also makeup and I like to see it's like I understand you weren't doing it at first but now you're presenting it to me and let me see if it's good and that is the point of view that I'm coming from because I know there's going to be a lot of comments with these concerns and your feelings are valid but it goes back to what I said you spend your money how you want and then one more thing I want to say because I said this in my live too and it's very very important you have to understand makeup the beauty industry it's all about money genera coint all right at the end of the day these businesses are just trying to make money they want your money they want you to reach down your pocketbook grab your coins your debit card your credit card and they want you to spend so what you also have to keep in mind is just because a brand looks like they're diverse and they have all the shades for everybody, that still don't mean that they're checking for you either. Because if you pay attention to a lot of these brands' Instagrams that do have a nice shade range, okay? They do have something for everybody, but when you go to their Instagram, 
what do you see? When you look at their stories, what do you see? What influencers are they pushing? What do you see? So yeah, a brand can very well so be marketing to everybody, but when you really start to dig deep and look at their advertising, the models that they're using, the influencers that they're using, that'll truly tell you if they for the people or not. So ending that there, let's get back into the palettes. Which one do you need? Because do I feel like you need both? Absolutely not. So if you are someone that already has volume three, skip this. And here's why. Because you already have this shade here. Also, out of this palette, these two, you already got them right here. You're good to go. Those are gone now. These are just highlighters. I think this one is going to be the best highlighter, highlighter out of the whole palette. So now I feel here you have your bronzer, you have another skin tone powder, you can use that under the eyes, whatever the case may be to highlight, and you have another highlighter. It would make more sense to roll with this one just for the simple fact that this does not have any blushes. Now this is specifically for the people that already have this because I don't feel the need for you to get the Tiger palette if you already have this because both of these face palettes are expensive, all right? Now, this palette here, I like this. This speaks to me. I like these tones. However, I feel that if you are someone who wants your blush to be blaring, to be popping, you want that to be the first thing seen, this is not going to be for you because this is going to be very subtle. It's subdued. This is uh, the face palette you could use for every day, work, church, going out for the girl that likes a soft thing, you want a little something but not too much, this is going to be right up your alley for you. But also you have to take into consideration and ask yourself, do I even like this color story? Because if it's not a color story that you're not into, I don't care how good I say something is or how good someone else says something is, if you are not drawn to it, sis, don't buy it. That's a no brainer. Now the face palette, this right here, why this is so appealing to me is because us as black women, we are just now getting to a point in life where we got face palettes. Do you know, especially for someone who has to do a lot of travel for work, do you know how nice it is to have just one face palette? I don't have to have, okay, let me get my bronzer, let me get my highlight, let me get my blush. The fact that I can just stick this in my bag and I'm Gucci, I like that. So if you do not have this palette and you were trying to figure out if you should get this over this, I'm going to tell you to get this just for the simple fact that you get more variety and it's easy to work with. Not that the Charlotte Tilbury isn't easy to work with, but when I say it's easy to work with, it's easy because you have everything right here. You don't have to reach for anything else. This is all you need for your face. You got your bronzer, you got your highlight, you got other highlight options, and you have some blushes here. You can use this on your eyes and get a complete eye look versus with the Charlotte Tilbury. Yes, this can be used on your eyes as well, but the only difference is with the Hourglass palette, you just have more options. And who doesn't like more options, all right? So I like both of these. I'm going to be utilizing these. This is gonna stay in my personal collection. I'm still gonna dabble and play with this, but keep in mind that I am a makeup artist, okay? That is what I do for a living full time. And this is going to slap in my kit and all my clients because of the type of artistry that I like to do. It works for me. So that is my closing thoughts as far as the Hourglass palette versus the Charlotte Tilbury palette. Down below in the comments, what you gonna do? Are you passing on all of it? Are you gonna buy one or not the other? Or are you just like, nah, sis, I'm gonna do what I want. I wanna buy both because if that's what you want to do, that's fine, but do yourself a favor and wait for the Sephora sale, okay? Because that's going to be in what, two to three more weeks? These are luxury items, sis. They are expensive. So if you know you want either of these or any of these, just wait for the sale so that way you can get some money off 
I appreciate each and every single one of you. Again, in the comments, keep it cute or put it on mute because I don't have time. And at the end of the day, it's just makeup. This shit washes off. Keep it simple. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.